Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial series Architecture Interior Design Modeling with Shaper 3D. In this introduction video I will show you how to set up reference images, create our plan view and model interior and exterior walls including opening for doors and windows. Before we get started let's set up our scene. Units in this case should be set to feet and architectural system for foot and inch format. That will make things a lot easier. Also our snapping and guide systems all should be turned on. In interior architectural modeling, the Y is actually the north. So the negative Y is south. Let's bring in a scan of a residential property. So this is the second floor of a house and the left side is actually facing south. So the right side of this property is facing north. So the object has to be rotated. And we have to scale this image too to the correct dimension. We see also here we have all the dimensions. Those will be very useful to try to calibrate this image. So let's do this. I can go to rotate and quickly rotate the image 90 degrees. Very good. Now to verify that this image is in the right scale, I'll rotate my view with two fingers so the lines are easier to read. Nine feet and eight inches. So this line I would like to draw somewhere next to it. So there, nine feet, six inches. Very good. Now this is my reference line that tells me actually how big I have to make the image. Uh, go to transform and then I select translate. I can select the image. Go next and then drag from there to here. And I want to zoom in and make sure this is nicely positioned like there. Very good. Okay. Done. Good. Let's take a look. There's actually the end of the line. I will draw another line horizontally so it's easier to see. Because now I have a target um, or a reference line with a start point. The image actually starts there too. And I have the reference line. It's easier to see where I have to stop. Very good. Okay, so then we can go to and top view to transform. And now we go to scale select our image, I zoom out, and then the scale widget, I move until it snaps onto that line. And then I start scaling. There, this is pretty good. This image is distorted. This image is not 100% clean or clear. So we cannot use this too much as a real reference anyway. Nice. Okay, so the last step might be to position this image nicely on the grid too. So we go transform, translate one more time. And I will select this image and move it to there. Let's see from this corner. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Now this is lined up. Open the overview and we will make this a little bit less transparent so it's easier to see through. Good. In this video, we will rebuild the area for bedroom plus two. And I will talk about the process, how I create the plan view sketches, and then also how I separate the exterior and interior walls with specific reasons, which I will explain. And then we will create the openings for the room door, bifold doors, and for the window. Our first line, ideally we will start at this corner. I draw a line and I draw a line. This point now I will lock, so I will never move. I will remove these uh, perpendicular constraints and make this one simply horizontal. Very good. Now I can zoom out. 
and pull this out a little bit more. I have here dimension uh, 17 feet 10 inches. Let's put this on. 17 inches, uh, sorry, 17 feet 10 inches and 2 feet 11 inches. There we go already. We can see that the image seems to be a little bit distorted. That's because it was scanned in from film. Okay, so this is actually defining our exterior wall, outer line. How do we do now the interior? There are various ways. I could just draw another line or I make myself work a little bit easier and use the offset edge. So this edge I will select. The walls have on the second floor a five inch diameter. So I will just offset it by five inch. Do the same then here. And here. To clean everything up, we will use the trim command and to remove these overlapping elements. Very good. Okay. This I will delete. I will make those horizontal vertical. Now, to make sure the distance is correct, I can give these lines Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. At dimension 2. You can also pull these dimensions out a little bit so they're easier to read. And instead of only going vertical horizontal, I can also, for example, select these two lines and then say, well, the inner one is parallel to the outer one. But I think it is actually a little bit easier in this case to simply go with vertical horizontal. Okay. Up here, we will close this too. And we have the exterior wall or a part of the exterior wall modeled. And that's good. That this is also separate because then when we go into modeling the interior walls, we can show and hide everything individually, which is really nice and useful. So let's try then to model the rest. I will start by drawing a line here and going down to here. This line is 11, 7, and this line is 11 feet. Very good. Okay, here I have the wall for the closet. So I'll create this by drawing two lines. We can actually also turn this auto constraint off then the constraints won't be created and I simply can create them only manually afterwards. Five inches thickness and then I will select these two points and this is two feet three inches. Good. How do we do now the walls on the other lines for the rest? Well here too we I will simply use my offset command, five inches. Very nice. Draw a line up and go over and then I go back down. Specify this down here. Very good. This I would like vertical, horizontal, same here. I have already my wall dimensioned on there. We can simply select these two lines and make them tangent. Then they are actually, as you can see, the same. Or you draw really like this, this line or this, um, this wall we draw completely through the place and then like we did at 
this line in between. It's because you can see there are, when we go into our perspective view, I can select the individual fills. Here, this is actually one piece. So it's a matter of preference, how you would like to do this. Very good. Okay, so our sketch is actually ready for the plan view. The walls are there. Now we can take a look at how we can add the openings for the doors. So here I will draw a horizontal and a horizontal line. There. This distance is three inches. And the opening, the raw opening for the door, when we cons construct actually the wood framing, is 32 inches. Good. Down here, we have four, four feet by four doors. Line, 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 and line. We can actually select multiple lines and then give them a horizontal vertical constraint all at once. Here, the dimension is one foot, four feet, four feet, and one foot. See the distance in the center, I don't even touch because now everything is symmetrical. Very good. Now, I will turn off this image so it's easier to see what we have. So let's extrude our walls. I go to here. Then I select this wall. And you see now I have to select these inner parts too. And if I extrude this all up now, it is one big wall block. But as I mentioned, the reason why I try to disconnect the interior and exterior walls is so I can extrude each one individually. So this one goes up eight feet. And based on how I would like to structure this, I could bring these uh, interior walls up and include these sections too for the interior wall. Very good. Good. Now to create the openings, we'll go to the bottom part. I select those three profiles defining the openings for the bifold doors and the room door. And then we extrude this simply 82 one and a half inches. And you see then when it extrudes into a wall, it cuts out the space for it. One technique is also to actually first draft the walls up and then we start drawing in all the elements for the doors or openings and then do the cuts. I simply draw everything together because then I have a nice plan view already that has all the dimensions and lines on it. Because this is also something I can export into uh, a DWG or DXF file. We have pretty much everything done besides the window. So to create a window on this wall, we can select it with a pencil and then with a finger I double tap and lower right corner, turn on cut section view. How cool is that? Now we actually, yes, yeah, you can see we're looking right at that wall. Cut section is turned on or section view and we see where the other walls are. So on this wall, I would like to create a rectangle there's a rectangle. The dimension of this rectangle is four feet, five inches, 
the width is 4 feet 10 inches. How do we position this now? There's actually a really nice and neat trick. I draw myself a line. And you see when I hit an edge, do this one more time here, something happened. I will turn off the objects and you see actually that when I drew a sketch uh, or a line and let it snap to the edge of a geometry, the geometry edge got projected into the sketch. Very useful. Now all I need to do is add dimensions to it. I can do this either by selecting these two lines. I sometimes rather prefer doing it here this way because then I can see a line. This line I will make horizontal. Try not to snap these endpoints into magenta points. And this distance is 22 inches. And this distance is 2 feet and 6 inches. Let's make this vertical horizontal. Very good. And then to punch the hole, we can simply select the face and extrude through it. And because this is direct modeling, we can always go back. And here, for example, it shows us the height, this edge to the lower edge. We can move these edges or when we select a face, we can also go to transform, we can move it. Everything can be adjusted afterwards. Really nice. Let's turn this off. Let's take a look at what we have. The last thing maybe to do is add a subfloor. So I will turn my basic sketch on again. A nice, this is a good rectangle I could simply use. I make this a little bit bigger on purpose. And then I turn the sketch off and show you how we will line up this up actually with the floor. Shaper also has very good geometry snapping capabilities. So I will select this face, go to more and translate. And then simply I drag from the face onto an edge, click done. And you see this edge was moved right to there. Let's do it one more time. Uh, yep, snap correctly. Very good. Here. And I'll push this a little bit further. In this case. Now the subfloor is obviously way too big. I simply made this bigger um, so it's easier to select the faces and for you also to follow. The subfloor has a thickness of 19, 32 inch. Very good. And uh, this pretty much sums up how we can import an architectural image of various degrees of quality, calibrate the image, position it correctly, and then use Shaper's sketching tools to create various uh, views, like for the plan view, elevation view. You saw like for the elevation view for the window, we just started drawing actually on the geometry to cut it out. We all have those Im uh, sketches. So a little tip is we call this plan view. And then we can call this, um, and then also all our objects. We should give, we should give names too. So subfloor, and here this I call interior wall, and this is exterior wall. Very good. Now the objects are very easy to understand. We know what is what. 
visually to make this a little bit easier also to read is we could give this some colors. So select this, go to color. There we are. So I use kind of like this color for the floor since this represents wood. The walls will be finished. And I select the walls. I make them white, nice and clean. There, this looks nice and refreshed. And that's it.